Hey guys, it's Haley here again with Real Time Animal Rescue. To start this video off, I want to give a huge shout out to Krista. Krista, thank you so much for sending me this wonderful tripod and ring light. With this new equipment, I'll be able to provide you guys with the best content possible. So today in Eastern Kentucky, it's really gloomy, it's fall, and there's nothing better on a rainy, dreary day than homemade cookies. I'm not big on box mixes unless the recipe specifically calls for it. So I try to do everything from scratch, but there are tons of pre-made cookie, muffin, and cake mixes that are accidentally vegan. And I can do a whole new video on that if you're interested. But my favorite cookies are, I don't have an official name for them. I call them dumpster cookies because it's like you take everything in your pantry and you kind of just dump it in a bowl, mix it and go. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, I think we can agree that nobody is perfect. So if you see a little bit of debris on my countertop, look over it. So to start out, I've got two sticks of dairy-free butter and a quarter cup of coconut oil in this bowl. We're gonna add that. Get all of it out as much as you can. And then two cups of brown sugar. Oh, what did I say about making a mess? It's gonna go everywhere. Embrace it. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's about a cup. In the interest of not making an even bigger mess and packing this brown sugar, I'm just gonna add a good shake to get any that I might have missed out of the measuring cup. Okay. Grab your whisk and whisk that together until it's well incorporated. we're gonna let this sit for five minutes. Why are we gonna let it sit for five minutes? Because if we add toppings and mix-ins to the cookie dough, it's all just gonna melt if the butter is hot. Pro tip, clean as you go so you don't have a huge mess at the end of cooking. So while that mixes, we're going to get together our flax eggs and we need baking soda and water. So this recipe calls for one flax egg. And if you guys remember from the first video, each egg, if you're using flax seeds, it's a one to three ratio. So you're gonna take one tablespoon of flax seeds and one, two, three tablespoons of water. Just get all of the milled flax in there. And this will turn into an eggy consistency as it settles. We also need one teaspoon of baking soda, not baking powder. What did we learn? No baking powder when we need baking soda. So one teaspoon of baking soda mixed with one tablespoon of water. I was ready to record this video and realized I was out of baking soda, so I had to run super quick down the road to get some. I like to leave an edge on my baking soda so I can level out what I'm getting. It's like a built-in leveler. One teaspoon of baking soda. One tablespoon of water. And get that mixed. And set aside. The butter oil brown sugar mixture has been calming down for a few minutes. Just go ahead and reincorporate all that. Should look like cement. 
to that, you're gonna add your egg. See how it's kind of eggy? And a, about a tablespoon of vanilla. I don't measure vanilla, but if you're using the good stuff like real vanilla, do about a tablespoon. That feels right to me. Mix that in. Perfect. I think this is the point that we should switch to a spoon. That's just the feeling I'm getting. So we're going to add two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. All-purpose flour is kind of like the baking soda and baking powder thing. If you have self-rising, you're going to need to adjust this recipe and leave out the baking soda. So there's one cup. Two cups. And a half. And we're also going to add the baking soda and water mix. Clean as you go. Rinse the cup out. And I like to add salt to everything because it brings out the sweetness. You can kind of measure. That looks good to me. Mix that all together. And this makes a ton of cookies. I know it doesn't look like it right now, but just wait until we put all of our mix-ins. You don't wanna overmix. So if there's a couple lumps, it's okay. Okay, on the side, I've got tons of good stuff. I've got about a cup of dairy-free caramels cut into fourths. I have eight ounces of um, dairy-free milk and dark chocolate. You can use chocolate chips if that would be easier. I just find that these melt a little bit better. Um, a cup of pretzels, potato chips, I bet would be awesome in this. And there's some toffee bits, dairy-free of course. And we're gonna add that in. And this recipe is going to double in front of your eyes. I love to eat this cookie dough straight out of the fridge. Unpopular, oh, I don't think that's an unpopular opinion. I feel like that's a universal experience. But I will say it is just as good baked. So to bake these, again, preheat to 350 and bake them until they're done. I, I think we learned in the last video, my oven is probably not the best parameter for baking things. Uh, if you're doing a full tray of cookies, I, it's just me, so I usually just bake one or two at a time when I want one. And I bake those usually for about eight to 10 minutes. So a full tray, I check on them at eight minutes, um, but it might take maybe 10 to 12 minutes. And it's so important after they come out of the oven, Top them with a little bit of flaky salt. It's a perfect salty sweet mixture. And the most crucial part of this recipe is you have to lick the spoon. See you guys next time. Have a great day.